So, My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 331 has been officially released, and in this video, I just want to go over how New Order works a little bit more in depth, as well as go over the differences between the official and unofficial translations. And without the way, let's get right into it. Hey guys, how is it going? It is your boy, Manga Mandrew, and I'm here to do my discussion for My Hero Academia, Manga Chapter 331, titled United States of America. Because of course it would be titled that, the greatest country on earth, at least by Americans. But yes, when it comes to this chapter of My Hero Academia, as I said in the review, it was a very good chapter where we learned a lot more about Star and Stripes Quark New Order, and that's pretty much what the entire focus of this video was going to be. I want to go a little bit more into how New Order works and what uh, Shigaraki was able to deduce as well as what we the readers were able to deduce as well. And then also go over some slight differences between the official and unofficial translations. So before we get more into it, I'd like to ask you if you haven't done so to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I do manga reviews for My Hero Academia, cover the spoilers, and do discussion videos just like this. So if that's something that you're interested in, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And without the way, let's get right into it. To start off, I want to really talk about the differences between the official and unofficial translations for My Hero Academia when it comes to this chapter, and overall, the main translations uh, between what is conveyed between the official and unofficial translations are relatively the same. The only real small differences comes from the clarification for how Shigaraki is describing New Order and what it actually does and its restrictions. And I would say the explanation is a little bit more clearer in the official translation than it is in the unofficial translation. But there are a few different translation things that I want to talk about. Uh, one of them comes from uh, when we see uh, Shigaraki beginning to go into how New Order works, where he brings up how there is a limit to how much that New Order can increase someone's like physical strength, the physical capabilities of the user, that there is a limit there, but that there isn't necessarily a limit for how weak Star and Stripe using New Order can make an object. And the main difference between the official and unofficial translation comes from the idea that in the unofficial translation, they talk about how New Order, when it comes to the rules and how there's no limit to weakening things, while in the official translation, they bring up the idea that there's no limit on how much the rule can incapacitate someone. So it is a slight difference and it still kind of means the same thing, but it still matters between someone and something because that is a strong focus for how New Order works and how it differs from using it on biological organisms and using it on non-biological organisms. And that's something else that is different between the official and unofficial translation when it comes to specific wording choices. The unofficial uses a biological while the official uses more terms of living versus non-living. So it is a slight difference and it doesn't really matter, but it is a difference nonetheless. And we pretty much do not get the next like slight difference between the official and unofficial translations that isn't specifically like word diction and meaning that can be used interchangeably comes from when we see Star and Stripe, the name of the commander, which is in the unofficial translations, Commander Akbar, spelled as if like the actual character, uh, not Commander Akbar, but uh, Admiral Akbar in the Star Wars series, it is spelled exactly how it is in the unofficial translation, but in the official translations, that's not the case because of copyright reasons. So instead of it being spelled as A-C-K-B-A-R, it's spelled A-G-P-A-R. Agapar. Uh, tomato, tomato, copyright bullshit. But another slight difference on this exact same page comes from what Star and Stripe says when it comes to uh, Japan's handling of Shigaraki and how Shigaraki has become a global threat. Because in the unofficial translation, what she says is that what they're going to do is pulverize him in ways that are illegal in Japan. But in the official translation, she says that they're going to have to beat him down with tactics that Japan lacks. And the major difference for why this is important because it's implying that in the unofficial translations, she's going to do something that Japan is not willing to do, which isn't necessarily accurate because we saw how Endeavor was willing to kill Shigaraki and you know, Endeavor is in Japan. While in the official translation, it has more to do with 
foreshadowing what the tactic is going to be, which is going to be the missiles that are coming from America to Japan or the Japanese airspace where they are fighting. And it makes sense that Japan would lack that type of technology because Japan in our world is not really capable of having that same military might in comparison to America. So it just makes sense from the context, not just of their world, but also ours. And the final differences between the official and unofficial translations are mainly when it comes to specific names of the attack, as well as a particular character name. One of the differences comes from a uh, Star and Stripes move, where in the unofficial translations it's called Ultra High Power Unification Laser, but in the official translation it's just titled United Hyper Max Output Laser. Uh, they're both cool names, so that doesn't really matter, but what truly matters is that the end of this chapter. And then the final most important difference between the official and unofficial translation comes from this one name change that is so monumental, so important, that I cannot overlook it. And no, it's not the difference between the name of the TIMAT missiles and the unofficial translation is titled New Model Hypersonic Intercontinental Cruise Missiles, while in the official translation is the State of the Art Hypersonic Intercontinental Cruise Missiles. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Star and Stripe's official name. In the unofficial translation, it's spelled with Kathy with a C, but in the official translations, it's spelled with Cassie with a C. So yeah, uh, in the unofficial translations, Kathy is spelled as an abomination, and I would rather prefer Cassie, C-A-S-S-I-E, than Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y. Why would you do that, translators? That is a literal abomination of a name. So with that out the way, let's go more into how New Order works because, oh boy, there's a lot to explain about this. So, about New Order, there was a lot that we got in this chapter. We got a reiteration of how New Order works, which is that the basics of it is if the user, in this case, Star and Stripe, aka Cassie, is able to touch someone, that person becomes, or that thing becomes a target, and if she calls out the name, she's able to assign a new rule to it. That is something that a lot of people outside of the US government would know about her quirk, but what they wouldn't know are the small implications that come from it that you can only really know if you are the user of New Order and know those restrictions and limits, or you're able to fight long enough to figure it out. And I think that's the main importance of why we're getting all of this information dropped now through Shigaraki's perspective. One is because New Order is an extremely broken quirk and there needs to be some restrictions on it, which we do see and we'll get into that a little bit more. But second is to show how Shigaraki was able to figure it out and why no one has been able to figure it out until this moment. And it mainly comes down to the potential fact that no one has been able to survive a fight against Star and Stripe this long because we saw that Shigaraki was able to literally survive without air, was able to tank multiple lasers, reflect them back at Star and Stripe, and even go against Star and Stripe telling him that if he moves, he will die. Yeah, most of the time, that will be enough to finish off anyone except Shigaraki. So that's why we're getting all of this information now, because this is information that no one would know unless they've been able to fight against Star and Stripe for an extended amount of time or worked for the government, and most people would not fall into either of those categories. So yeah, let's go a little bit more into how New Order works when it comes to its restrictions and limits and how it actually works. For starters, as we learned in this chapter, uh, there is a set limit for how powerful she can make herself or she can make someone else because if she can make it limitless or even more powerful or comparable to All Might, then she wouldn't necessarily need her second rule to implement it on Shigaraki. She could have just punched him out of existence. And then the second thing that we learned is that there isn't a necessary limit or minimum for what she can do to incapacitate someone. Because we pretty much saw that she was able to incapacitate Shigaraki or could incapacitate anyone as long as she knows their name by saying, if you move, you will die in relationship to that person's heart stopping. So we learned that there isn't necessarily a limit, but there still are some restrictions that need to apply before she's able to use the quirk properly. One of the main restrictions is the fact that the user needs to know the target's name, which doesn't seem that complicated, but it gets a little bit more complicated when we go more into how that naming is important and how it makes for a very interesting and cool restriction to a very powerful quirk. 
Because in this chapter, Shigaraki realizes that the reasoning why New Order didn't work on him is because he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know if he's All For One or Shigaraki or even Shimura. So he brings up this idea and this possibility that when it comes to New Order, if it wants to work on like a living organism. So because of that, Shigaraki comes most likely to the right conclusion that when it comes to New Order, the way it can impose a new rule on an object or a target is if both the user of New Order and the target itself recognizes the target's name as being the target's name. Pretty much meaning that a way to get around New Order is to make sure that you as the person being targeted does not allow for the user of New Order to definitively know what your name is or what you identify your name as. And to sum it up a little bit more concisely, for New Order to work, the target and the user must both agree on the target's name or what the target's sense of self is. If one of these people, either the target or the user, is unable to identify the target's name or identify the sense of self in the target, then New Order won't work on it. And the only exception to this rule is if the target is something that has the inability to identify itself. So that means that things like air, solid material that isn't living, like dead organisms, uh, seawater, the land, objects or targets that have the inability to identify themselves, New Order can work on those pretty much flawlessly, which is stated that that is the utility of New Order. That is what New Order is best used for, being used on non-living things. But when it comes to a living thing, more particularly living organisms such as like dogs, different animals, potentially plants, as well as just people in general, it's more complicated to impose New Order on us because we have the ability to change the sense of self to change the target's name because let's say she wanted to use her new order not on Shigaraki but on All For One. Here's the thing that we have to remember, All For One's technical name is Shigaraki. We may not know his first name but his name is Shigaraki but All For One identifies his name as All For One. Meaning that if Star and Stripe were to say Shigaraki would die if he moves five inches and she's meaning Shigaraki to be the name of All For One, New Order may not affect All For One if All For One identifies himself not as Shigaraki, but as All For One. So it's very interesting to see that when it comes to New Order, that there is a lot of nuances that can come from it that both Star and Stripe needs to be aware of when she's fighting an opponent as well as something that the opponent can use to their advantage to get an upper hand on New Order being able to affect them personally. Now, this doesn't mean that New Order will have no effect on the person at all. It would have an effect on the person in sort of roundabout ways. Because in the chapter, they bring up how when it comes to New Order, another possible restriction of it, and this isn't necessarily confirmed, but that you cannot use New Order in a way that creates a new rule that kind of arbitrarily involves something that the user didn't touch. That's why when Shigaraki brings up the idea that if he touches the air within this said range, he will die, why that may not be effective on Shigaraki because it requires an outside source to actually cause the rule to come into play. When we remember what she actually says to Shigaraki, which was Shigaraki's heart will stop if he moves one inch or something like that because she never says that if Shigaraki were to move that he would die, but that if Shigaraki were to move, something would occur that would cause his death. So another restriction could come in from New Order that the rules that the user has to set must directly involve the target itself and cannot involve other secondary things, or it has to be specific when it comes to the new rule. And we've seen how specific New Order's uh, actions can be to a certain extent, when it comes to Star and Stripe, AKA Cassie, how when she says that the air certain meters away will disappear or that the air will solidify to be a thousand times in her shape, 
we've seen that she has been very specific when it comes to how she uses new order so maybe that's something that comes with new order that to create these new rules they have to be very specific to the target because even with the lasers when she calls out the lasers will combine into one that is still a very specific thing where she doesn't say the lasers will combine into one that will insta kill shigaraki so basically she cannot give orders that can cause someone to specifically die but can give orders that can lead directly to the target's death or directly to the target changing so yeah uh, that's pretty much a lot of the nuances when it comes to uh, the quirk itself and that even though it is an extremely powerful quirk that there are ways around it it still doesn't mean that you will automatically win against uh, Cassie if you know how New Order works but it gives you a slight edge and that slight edge can show you that the quirk itself isn't completely broken because if it was completely broken, oh, there is nothing that Shigaraki could have done if New Order was completely broken. So that's just some food for thought and sort of kind of how New Order possibly works. So now that we know how New Order works, now we can kind of theorize on how Shigaraki is going to get out of this situation. Because in all honesty, uh, he's pretty much screwed. Like there's very few ways that he can really get out of this situation. Probably the most likely option is that when it comes to the missiles that uh, she is sending over to Shigaraki, which most likely she's probably going to use new order on the missiles to kind of like alter the properties of the missiles. She may like these missiles themselves may not be as powerful as like nukes, but that they can do heavy damage to Shigaraki if they all land their mark. Probably what she's going to say is that she's going to touch the missiles and say these missiles will always hit their mark. Or that these missiles will hit their mark a hundred or a thousand meters away or how far Shigaraki is making sure that all of these missiles in one way or another using no order hits Shigaraki or she could go from one missile to another and add a new order saying that oh this missile will hit Shigaraki or this missile will hit the target 12 meters away this missile will hit the target 12 meters away and do it for every rocket still imposing one rule at a time but doing it multiple times in succession. So yeah, that's a possibility, but there's a very high chance that she could just say that the missiles increase the power to make the destruction and the explosion even greater. But even then, we've seen that Shigaraki was able to withstand endeavors like Prominence Burn, which even when it comes to the lasers in this chapter, Star and Stripe equates the power of the lasers to be equivalent to Endeavor's firepower, meaning that, like I said, Endeavor's firepower is the equivalent of eight lasers seven or eight lasers but i think most likely shikaraki is going to survive that and i think that this is just going to be them throwing everything that they have at shikaraki it failing and potentially leading to star and stripes aka casey's demise and people also theorize that she could use her quirk to erase her quirk permanently which i think could be an option if she's willing to sacrifice everything because she does bring up the idea that it's not just her hero license that she's gonna lose commander akbar which could imply that she may use her quirk to get rid of her quirk or she may like kill herself or sacrifice herself in a way so that her quirk doesn't go to the hands of shigaraki all for one so that is a possibility and i know people are going to bring up the idea that oh eri could just fix her if she loses her quirk and i would just have to remind y'all eri requires some sort of energy source to actually activate her quirk and as we saw within the past uh chapter or the past arc her horn has significantly decreased, meaning that even if she wanted to use her quirk, it's very likely that she won't be able to because she wouldn't have the energy to actually do it or whatever she needs to stockpile, she may not have enough of it to actually rewind her quirk back. And heck, maybe she has, in reference to Star and Stripe aka Casey, may have full dominion on it too, even to the point where even rewind can't rewind it back. Her rules are absolute. She could impose two rules upon herself, one rule saying I will lose my quirk and then simultaneously say that my quirk can never come back. Which if she does that, that would be amazing, it would also mean her guaranteed death but it would still fall into the idea that I have that she will still play a role in the story by not giving her quirk over to all for one Shigaraki while still not being very beneficial to the heroes giving them an advantage. Or heck, even if she does have an advantage, maybe this story arc is showing us that the advantage to the heroes is not that great because Shigaraki is even greater than that advantage and could still wipe them out. 
And you may be thinking, well, if she can't stop Shigaraki, how is Deku supposed to stop him? To my response is, I do have a theory and it involves All Might dying and Deku gaining full access to One For All without any restrictions because of All Might's death. So yeah, problem solved. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed the explanation for how New Order works. I've come to accept that New Order is an extremely broken quirk, but it's not too broken, which is great to have when you're trying to have a character that we really haven't been brought up in the story have an ability that is extremely powerful, but then you begin to question why we haven't seen it prior, and it could just be due to the fact that we just didn't know anything about it, and we wouldn't have known anything about the restrictions up until recently. Also, you know, America, so there's that. But overall, really enjoyed the chapter, really enjoyed the discussion, really liked talking about how New Order works, and maybe you enjoyed it as well. And if you did, why don't you leave a like down below, or leave a comment down below on if you think that New Order is an extremely great quirk, or do you think that it's a JoJo stand? Because that is something that has been making the rounds around the community. Yeah, it's pretty much not a quirk, it's basically a JoJo stand. So leave your thoughts down in the comments down below, leave a like on the video if you liked it, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more content like this as well as don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified for whenever I upload more content like this. Do all that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!